everyone and welcome back to this final visualization uh, of this little mini series within the series honoring the visualizations created by uh, a social activist and uh, sociologist W.E.B. Du Bois. We're going to go ahead and create this wrapped bar chart. Uh, so it's like a standard bar chart but then it wraps around and I, we're going to do it with a line because it'll make it way easier for anyone to learn how to rebuild this frankly so we're going to do it as a line chart but just imagine it it's a wrapped bar chart it's one of the classics if we sort of just take a look at that visualization here by wb du bois you'll see it's got this sort of wrapped nature and i'm pretty sure that if anyone was reviewing visualizations today they would say why are you wrapping that clearly doesn't make sense but honestly it's a to me, the use of the visualization is quite unique and I think is something that can be noted because like, it's jarring in the design. So we're going to recreate that using Tableau Superstore data of all things because it comes with Tableau. So let's just jump into Tableau here. Here is our visualization and we're going to create this wrapped line slash bar chart and I'm going to make it super easy or easier to control because you can control the wrap and you could just specify any value, what percentage of a total that you want to wrap on. And if you put in enough values here, you'll actually, well, I've kind of got it blocked, but you could technically wrap uh, up to 0.6 or 0.5 uh, all the way around and uh, see those wraps and do it dynamically. So that's what we're going to recreate. Let's just dive a little bit closer into this visualization. So if I go in, you'll see I have really two columns controlling this view are two measures. One is called split calls and the other is split rows, but I've uh, added a negative sign in here. And then I also have a filter called sales TF equals true. So let's recreate this visualization. I'm just going to go ahead and create a new sheet here. And like always, when I'm working with this data type, I am editing my data source and showing you what's going to happen. So with this, I have my orders data set that comes standard with Tableau. And I've created a separate data source called placeholder sheet three. That's the name of sheet three was from my placeholder data set. It's a CSV and it's just a single column. Then the column's called value and it counts up from zero to 200. And we need all 200 values here today. The other videos, you didn't need all of them. This one, you definitely need every single one. And we are going to use those to essentially create our lines. So let's go ahead and get started. Number one. What we want to do is create a new calculation that we're just going to call value percent. And we're going to standardize those values. They go from 0 to 200. We want them to range from 0 to 1. So we're just going to say value divided by the max value. That's it. Value percent. Done. Hit OK. Part 2. We want to get a percentage of the sales by subcategory. So we're going to standardize that too. We're going to say fixed on subcategory, give me the sum of sales and divide that by the sum of sales. That's it. This will standardize by subcategory uh, what percent each of these values it makes up. Actually, I'm going to tweak this. This isn't right at all. Um, I'm going to copy this fixed sum, subcategory sum of sales. I'm going to delete this. Let's divide now and then we're going to do an LOD of max. And then inside that LOD, we're going to paste this fixed subcategory LOD. So it's a nested level detail. This max value should return whatever the highest subcategory is, which I believe if we just sort of take a sneak peek back at it, is phones. So 330,007 is what we're going to divide our max by here. And this is going to give us all our values between 0 and 1. And we can just call this, by the way, sales percent. So now I'm going to hit OK. The next step is essentially bringing those two calculations to create this filter called sales TF. We're just going to go back to our sheet here, create a new calculation. Let's just call it sales bar TF. And here we're just going to say, is the value of that percent less than or equal to sales percent? That's it. That's our calculation. And this is going to control our entire view, really. We're going to put this on filter. Let's go take sales TF, put it out on filter, and just choose true. Now to start building this thing, we can go find subcategory, place this out onto rows, 
And now we just need to, um, uh, why don't we do entire view? Let's build those wrapped. I don't even want to do it. I want to just fit the width. And we're going to make a little more space here. So now let's build those wrapped calculations, shall we? We are just going to um, do the split rows calculation first. So create a new calculation, call it split underscore rows. I'm going to do another underscore for mine just because I already have created it once. And now I'm just going to say um, in parentheses our value percent minus in parentheses value percent again. We're going to use the modulo. Oh, and we need to create a parameter, a wrap parameter. So I already have created this parameter, but you can go ahead and create it too. The wrap parameter is just a, if we go ahead and edit this, you'll see it is a float. And I actually want to make this a range. Let's specify it to be between 0.6 and 1. Otherwise, it's just not useful. And our step size can be like 0.05. So wrap is the name. It's a float. Current value 0.06 and then min 0.06 to 1 at a 0.05 step. All right. So now that we're sorry digressed a little bit, we've got that parameter in there. Now we can just add wrap. We'll close that parentheses and we're going to close it again and just do wrap again. What this is going to do is if it's in that first set of values from 0 to 0 0.6, it'll give you a value of 0. And if it's the next value, it'll give it a value of 1. It's sort of creating those values for us. I can just hit OK now. Let's go find this rows calculation, place it out on columns, and we're going to make this uh, dimension. So we have a couple showing up here. By the way, let's just sort subcategory. Right click, subcategory, choose field, and we're going to sort on, uh oh, there we go, sales. I always worry, I just use every resource on my computer all the time, and uh, sort descending by sum of sales. The last calculation is called split calls. So we're just going to create another calculator field called split calls, oops, sorry, by the way, split rows, let's put that in rows, um, and now split calls. And I'll just add an underscore again to separate it out. We were just going to say if split rows, if this is, by the way, modulo 2, this is going to be the remainder on this. So if it's even or odd is what I'm doing here. So if these are even values, then we want to do the value percent minus, and since I spelled it wrong, spilt rows times our wrap parameter. And that's it. And then we can just say else minus value percent plus split rows. Again, I spelled it the spilt rows plus one times wrap. Uh, and then we're going to just do one last just tiny little adjustment for whatever reason there's probably more to this but I'm just going to add in here 0 0.05 divided by the max of value this way uh, you can control sort of the location of your view and I'm going to say end here so split calls let's hit OK we're going to go find this calculation split calls we bring it out onto columns we'll change this to a dimension, and you can see things are coming together here uh, quite, quite well. But on split rows, we're just going to double click and we're going to give it a negative sign. And that's going to wrap it downward. Now let's change our uh, type to line and we'll go find value and place value onto path. And let's make sure that it's a dimension. And you'll see we have this tiny little bump here. Uh, I'm not digging why that's there. I might have added that in there with the calls. So we'll just go in there and do a quick edit. Just comment this out once, see what happens. Um, I was having troubles earlier. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's doing that. Um, minus 0.5, maybe. Yeah, so it's not like perfectly wrapped, but we're going to call it good enough because when we size this up, uh, you'll see that there's quite a bit of space. So the split rows axis, right click on it, edit it, and then we're just going to set this range from negative 2.5 to 2.5.
Now we can close this out. We can right click and uh, format. And I'm just looking at this and I'm already not digging the, the spacing on it. So maybe I'm gonna double click on split rows and do times two. Oh, that's much better. Just more spacing is always good because when we shrink this down, uh, you'll notice and size things out. We just, we want a little bit more space in there. Um, right click on this axis, uncheck show header, and then we're just going to, uh, let's go find sales. And we'll put sales out on label. Don't worry about all these extra labels, just choose line ends and choose the start line. And we can just, you know, align those up as we need to be. And let's go ahead and uh, make sure that we get rid of that mark dot. This is a big one. It'll just not put that line out there. And we can also right click on this axis on split calls. And uh, we're almost there. Just fix this negative 0.1 and we'll leave the other end automatic. And the point one, by the way, is gonna give us lots of space. Don't panic. Uh, when we put it onto your dashboard, it's not gonna have all that extra space when it comes down to it. The last steps, the same as always, right click on your view, format, and then make sure your row dividers and your column dividers are turned off. Go up, turn off your grid lines, your zero lines, your axis rulers, your axis ticks, and make sure that they're bold here, as you can see on all of them. That'll make sure that they're all gone. And then last step, uncheck show header on your split columns header here. And that's it. That's the visualization that it gives you that wrapped look to your bar chart. And if we would did go put this onto a dashboard now, you will see it does have that wrapped look to it. And um, yeah, like I said, if we bring these values over, it's not super intense, it's not too far off, uh, but we have that wrap functionality going on. And it's all dynamic. You can use the parameter to update the value and it will indeed update the value. Anyway, uh, let's wrap this up. This is the last video in this series, highlighting visualizations created by WEB, Do Boys, and um, hope you enjoyed it. If you learned anything along the way, whether it's data densification, area, filling areas, or wrapping, uh, you know, the bar charts here, go ahead, like this video. Anyway, take care and we'll catch you in the next one.